Hello everyone. What we saw on Friday was definitely a follow through day and um, it's even more significant because of the way that we followed through. The Russell 2000 that we're looking at really doesn't show it, but you can see that intraday sell off um, from the open to the lows of the day before we rallied and closed near the highs. A little bit better pronounced here in the NASDAQ as you can see how it opened below where it closed yesterday. We gapped down and broke those lows going into like 10 a. 10 a.m. yeah east coast time and then we proceeded to find the lows and rally through the rest of the session with all of the indexes closing at their high of the day on heavier volume so it's a clear follow-through day uh, another good, pos potential good sign for rally is that we have positive divergence on all of our oscillators and so i see that that is a potential very good sign that if these start to turn and coil higher here off their lows and want to curl higher, MACD, TSV, and all of that, I say that we could possibly have a nice little rally here. However, we cannot ignore the fact that the 50, 200, and July and August resistance levels all are ahead on all of these indexes, and the Russell 2000 has a lot of resistance to battle through. And for anybody that thinks that we're going to go straight up higher, normally, whenever the most powerful rallies and I know I'll never get one like this again until we actually have a real bear market and we haven't had a bear market that then starts without QE let me paraphrase that because in 2008 the 2009 uptrend it's my own fault I was foolish caught me off guard I was still looking for my beautiful hot charts that showed up before the 2003 rally showed up on the follow through in March and continued to show up throughout the year throughout 2004 5 6 and 7 so I was relying too much on those beautiful Max Green Bob huge accumulation charts um, in 2009 and ignoring the high quality perfect speculator scan, can slim stocks. So that's where I made a mistake. This time around, I won't. So what I do is I look for both. Well, it's not a good sign that ever since our lows, I know I'm focusing on the Russell 2000, but let me switch back to the NASDAQ. Since our lows here on 929, that during these four sessions, I haven't received any extremely high quality signals. BCO was the best one three days ago. That, that, that's one of the better looking technical patterns and a higher quote quote quality stock and it's working out nicely but besides that it's all been these small banks that have been whipping me BNC and even took out half my sell stops today before reversing thanks a lot and that's what these thin stocks do in volatile markets but following today's session I didn't flag anything these are the two stocks I fl three stocks SHOP Beautiful technical pattern, so I like this one a lot. If you really like it, you can set buy stops above here, but I got to do further research this weekend to see if I'm going to set buy stops on this one. But I got to admit, I like the pattern. But what's it doing? BOP is going in the wrong direction. I don't think that I would be seeing that if this was a super strong situation. And then HME, at first I was like, oh, yeah, I want to get long this stock. But that price pattern looks a little tight compared to the previous price pattern. And this jumping up here looks like it's probably been bought out. Sure enough, I go to look at it. Lone Star purchased the stock back here. Estimated to take it out at 75.23. Today it was confirmed it's going out at 75.23 on October 7th. So, okay, so you got those two. And then an actual speculative long position that I will be taking this evening, APD, APDN, Applied DNA Sciences. As great as that name sounds, you should see the revenue growth and the potential revenue growth that's even better. So this is a catalyst to be a new leader in our uptrend, but this was the only signal that I received today. And even then, it's a little risky because it's up 6% on the day, and we're not going to know where I'm wrong in the position until I lose at least 7% of the, of the on this trade. So it was found in my Max Green Bot for five day scan. It was found in my Green Bot for 20 day scan, and it was confirmed in the price volume Bot scan. So I'm going to go ahead and take it. But still, it's only going to be 1% of my account capital. I'm not going to pay more than 525 for it and move below 467. I'll be out of all of it. Uh, but this isn't the best kind of high quality signal. You know, and I mean, to think that HME, Shop, and APDN were the only ones following a session like today kind of a minor red flag i would think that if we were stronger i would have flagged more than just three stocks and had more than one speculative long position though i will say do i not have my market smith stocks up again once again i closed them out i'm so sorry guys i always restart my computer for making these videos so it shows up properly with my dual monitor setup 
in the YouTube videos because whenever you don't do it, it it truncates it and everything. So APDN though, some big revenue growth, very, very interesting technology. Definitely want to keep an eye on, but I just thought I would have gotten more. But now the good news is when I look out there, look at MU, look at BZUN, you know, we got some moves off the low. CBM, you know, off the 200-day moving average. SIMO looks like it's rounding out. VIPS. I'm just now going to start posting stock symbols. You need to look at the upper left-hand corner for the names. But if you notice the same pattern showing up in all these stocks, they're all starting to round out. I especially like this one, multi-fine line electronics. But, you know, you can also see the big volume surges off the um, extreme lows here. So this could always be a sign, you know, FXI overall in China that, you know, stocks might want to, you know, rally out. Look at how nice and tight Netflix has been trading during this entire pullback. I tell you what, if that gets back above the 50-day moving average, this is a stock I'm going to want to fucking load up on. It's got another new series out called Narcos that's just absolutely incredible. But as you can see with all these stocks I'm putting up like EPHE, Philippines, Baidu, PXD, you've got those kind of moves, Whole Foods market, you just got those kind of moves that are indicative of a market that wants to hunt for a lows. It doesn't mean it has to, but now let's look at the bank stocks like Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, these look like successful retest of the 824 lows on very, very large volume surges. And even though the stocks have been selling off, you'll notice these bullish intraday reversals on almost every session that they sell off. So as they've been selling off, it's been going from weak hands, it appears, into strong hands. So we'll continue to keep an eye on everything. So despite me not getting any new long signals, at least there's some setups out there that could turn into some great potential long signals. Another important um, aspect of our reversal today too is that the reversal is not coming on just any news we got some really bad macro data in the morning and we sold off and somebody came in and accumulated stocks all day long sending them out at the high of the day that is an extremely bullish reversal and that is coming right after the investors intelligence survey just saw bears hit 35 percent and the bulls hit 25 percent that's the first time that's happened since 2011, which coincided with the bottom in that year. However, in 2008, it did not coincide with the bottom. It got down to about a 20, 25 point gap. I have to go back and look, but the first time it became a 10 point gap, to, it, we continued to sell off and we sold off and eventually we had a 20, 25 point gap that then marked the bottom in the 2008 pullback. But overall, Investor Intelligence Survey is going the right direction and that follows the VIX hitting a very extreme level on 824 where it hit um, 53.29. Now that being said, with the markets testing their most recent lows, there's definitely not as much fear this time around because as you can see the VIX, it's at 20, it's not 53. Intraday on the most recent, you know, you know, when we were falling, fear only got back up to 28. So it's hard to say that's fearful. But the Investor Intelligence Survey is coming in, and the AAII bulls have been below their average now for 31 straight weeks. That's also a record. So there's some indications that, you know, we might be trying to find a bottom here, but not enough is out there yet to confirm it. If volume would have been huge today. Would have received a few high quality signals, absolutely. But at least there's bases, as you just saw me post, out there forming. You know, I mean, whoops, 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 whoops. Got to press J first. But you know, you know, I mean, like looking at Whole Foods Market, um, that's you know, pretty, pretty, pretty nice potential sign for a rally. And even though this is the Philippines ETF, you know, it's I like to see these kind of charts start to forming out there, especially like Netflix and MFLX. So we'll see if this can continue. But with today's gains, there was obviously some sells. TVIX is a 50% sell with a move below its 20-day moving average. SMN, same thing. Tex, same thing, below its 20-day moving average. DXD, same thing. And SOX S, same thing, below its 20 and 50-day moving average. So all these had to be 50% sell stops below today's low a day. And then there still was one failure in the long side, which is another indication that the market isn't super strong. Even though it was a spec stock, it gapped up, should have held it, didn't. But a second close below the 20-day moving average on EDUC, a spec position, that is a 100% full sell. If you weren't knocked out of it, you could use the 638 low, but I would, you know, continue to go ahead and use 662 
on a closing basis. So another couple more pennies. If it closed at 661, I'd go ahead and get all out. All right, I'll see you on Monday, everyone.